Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. We're live. SiliconANGLE.TV's continuous coverage of VMworld 2012. Uh, we're here with a couple of CUBE alums, good friend of the CUBE, Rich Napolitano, who's the president of EMC's Unified Division, and Eric Herzog, who's the senior vice president of marketing for that division. Gentlemen, welcome to the CUBE. Good afternoon. Good to see you guys. Good to be here again. Uh, things are good, you know. I mean, Rich, they keep coming at you. <laughs> <laughs> keep knocking them off. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. It's like Andre the Giant with all those guys <laughs> coming at him. And, and you guys are still king of the hill. Congratulations, by the way. Uh, Wikibon just released the results uh, last week of its VMware integration uh, study, yes. independent study of uh, the quality of VMware integration. You guys came out number one again. We're very excited about independent that. Independent survey of customers. Um, we asked, you know, who's the number one uh, storage supplier in VMware? You guys, we asked customers that were not EMC customers, who's number one, and EMC came out number one in that segment. So, across the board, you know, no, no matter how you look at it. For us, so, yeah. congratulations. No, that's no, we're very excited, and, and you guys do a great job on that survey, and. Uh, it's the voice of the customer, right? So there's no greater truth. Yeah, right. There's no greater truth. Yeah, we're proud of that. We put a lot of time into it. Like I say, it's, uh, it's, 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 it is what it is. Data yeah. doesn't lie. Yeah, no. Yeah. And we invest a lot in that space and we'll continue to do that. There's some innovations uh, that are coming this year and next in that space. We're going to continue our leadership. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, if we, if we create a you know, tight solution with VMware, we reduce complexity in the data center. And that's, and that's one of the key propositions for the market. Reduce complexity, reduce cost and that's fundamental to uh, really improving IT as we roll forward. So complexity has been this um, kind of perpetual inhibitor to growth in, in the industry. Uh, do you think we've, we've solved that problem? Well, we'll never solve it completely, but we'll make it better. And I think um, you know, with every innovation comes the introduction of some complexity. So th the trick is leveraging the innovation while taking complexity out. And there's some things that we announced at the EMC world, which I think we'll talk about perhaps a little later, you know, vCenter Ops, and just how do you how do we make our technologies, whether it be flash or virtualization or management, um, how, do we, how do we remove complexity to get people to receive the benefits of the underlying technology? That's the trick. So get the benefits of the technology in terms of cost, cost per transactions, cost of capacity, cost to deploy a VM, you know, cost to deploy a seat, take cost out, but make it easy to consume. So Eric, what's your point of view on all this? I mean, you're relatively new to, to EMC, a couple years now, right? Yeah. And uh, so you come in as an outsider, you, 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 there was actually a lot of change going on in the unified division when you joined. So what, from a marketing standpoint, what, what have you done and you know, where, you, where do you want to take it? Well, our, our key thing at, at uh, Unified is to drive application integration and application centricity. Everyone can talk about IOPS and gigabytes a second, but not many people can say, here's why our product is best for VMware, here's why our product is best for SQL or Oracle or SharePoint or whatever the app is, including vertical market apps. You know, 50 some percent of all healthcare institutions use EMC storage, for example, integration with a total different set of applications that most horizontal companies wouldn't be aware of. So our key is focused on application integration and still continue to meet the needs of the storage admins and the storage architects, but at the same time, meet the needs of the CIO and the application owners with the same set of tools that allow them to easily integrate, manage, and monitor, um, and optimize the storage that we provide. That's a critical thing for unified storage. So Pat uh, was on this morning, I know Rich, you just got here. Um, your old boss, I guess, was My up there. My old boss. <laughs> and, um, well, you never lose Pat as a boss. That's, <laughs> yeah, how, that's yeah. how it works. <laughs> there are guys at Intel that still work for Pat, <laughs> actually, right. I should point out. Yeah. And that's, you know, through EMC proper and now in VMware, they still work for Pat. He's a legend, there's no doubt about it. But he talked about this museum of legacy, legacy systems, um, and of course, it's VMware's objective to, to bring all those together. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing organizationally um, those changes take place? I mean, Eric, you were just talking about all these different sort of application areas that you guys go after. Is that changing, or is it just becoming sort of one ubiquitous I.O. blender, or do you see that sort of staying fairly heterogeneous for a while? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question, so uh, let me take a shot at it and then you okay. can tweak it. Um, th there's no question that you know, virtualization uh, provides an environment where you can collapse many applications onto a common infrastructure. So we certainly see that, where many different types of apps come onto a common infrastructure. I think you had the New York Stock Exchange on here a minute ago, yeah. and they talked about very much the same thing from a kind of service provider to their clients. And they have a variety of different applications they build onto a converged infrastructure. The, the, the opposite, opposite of that is that some applications at tremendous scale have discrete infrastructure. So if you look at um, certain large-scale block applications, 
they'll, they'll only use block infrastructure like a VMAX. If you look at certain large scale uh, genomics, et cetera, uh, which are file oriented, they'll, they'd use Isilon for very, very large scale uh, file implementations. When you look at kind of unified, we live in this kind of hybridized world of kind of block and file, transaction and capacity, and so many things that have a diverse set of applications on a common infrastructure will be on a kind of unified device. Is that what you were going after? Yeah, okay, so, but, so uh, now how does Flash affect all this? I so mean, Flash is, it's important because Flash is one of those innovations that you know, we're probably 10, 15% into absorbing uh, those technologies into our product at this time. And so when you look at Flash, one of our kind of key uh, adages is a little bit of Flash can go a very long way. What we mean by that is you can apply a little bit of Flash and have a dramatic impl implications on your application's performance. So some 5% Flash, you can drive 80% of your IOs to that, uh, that small percentage of Flash, but more importantly, drop the average response time for your applications in half. In other words, reduce response time to your apps literally by 50%. And that has big implications on people's application. And you couldn't do that with just spinning disk, you just can't. Yeah, and it has implications on things like VM density, so you're going to attack the operational efficiency piece of it, Correct. but it's also going to start creeping in, isn't it, to the business productivity side. Certainly. Things you can't do with spinning disk. Correct. Um, that's exciting, no, it's kind of scary. No, it's beautiful. In a way. It's, it's a beautiful it's thing, right? It's a good thing, right? If, if you own the assets, to and be able to. And we own all the assets, <laughs> so we have VMAX, we have Isilon, we have Project X or Extreme IO, we have our hybrid arrays, you know, VNX, uh, Isilon and VMAX, and we have Lightning, we have Thunder, you know, VF Cache. So at the end of the day, we have all the host footprint of say like a Fusion IO, we have all the external stuff of Violin, we have all of the kind of all flash arrays of Pure and some of these startups in the space, and we have a huge portfolio of these hybrid arrays. So at the end of the, at the, end of the day, we have every single technology base covered, and so, which really puts us in a unique position in the market to, to actually be able to position, not a product, but the right solution. Because we have everything in the arsenal. There's no one else in that position in, in the marketplace. Yeah, so how do you see that solution uh, evolving? Um, does, it, does it become more hybridized, uh, more consolidated, more, you know, there's a big thing about converged, uh, or do you see you know, still very specific requirements for different use cases? Well, I think, you know, we talked a minute ago about complexity, and, and part of the challenge of having this rich portfolio is the complexity that it represents. So, you know, one of the things we work on a lot in the storage, the unified storage divisions, and now even across the symmetrics, is to get into things like common management and common replication. So, say, symmetrics and, and the mid range now have Unisphere as common management. We also have recover points or common replication. So, we drive commonality of those touch points that are really, really important to the customer. Our, our APIs are getting more and more consistent about how we plug into things like vCenter Operations Manager, et cetera. Um, so underneath it, kind of right tool for the right job is our strategy um, and understanding the use cases and the technologies, but we need to simplify how we articulate that because it's going to be a little overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So, Eric, I wonder what you make of this. I don't know if you were in the keynotes this morning. You may have just arrived yourself, but there's a big discussion about software-defined data center, which is all about abstracting, uh, the physical, the logic from the physical, pooling the resources and then automating. Um, and there's also been some discussion about software-defined storage. Um, so what do you make of all that from a marketing standpoint, messaging, is it just sort of industry buzz, is it, is it real? What's well we see that here? actually with the unified products is fitting right into that. So EM, uh, VMware has already talked about VVOL and EMC will be there day one with VVOL support which is sort of their, their first progression you know, there's always going to be hardware underlying that, that software infrastructure. And while some people think that will commoditize, what, is sort of, what has been proven that if it was all commoditized, it would be naked flash. If it was all commoditized, it would be basic naken disk drives. And quite honestly, people have been saying that for 20 years, yet EMC and its big competitors are still all in business. Um, and it's sort of proven that when you do these levels of abstraction, you still need tight coupling of what's underneath up to that level of abstraction. So software design data center, as well as software design storage and all of those, will still need a strong storage underpinning from a physical perspective. And what's key is the right stitching between the hardware underneath and how it operates with that software abstraction. So we actually think it's an ideal opportunity actually for us, and we've sort of proven that, for example, with our VMware integration already today, 
and with integration with other technologies and other software vendors that we share is, you know, we can, as they progress forward with this, we still think we will be the strongest underlying physical devices that will have to stay there, and we will optimize our software and our RAID stack to optimize whatever they've got on the software layer, and bottom line, using a bare naked flash drive or a bare naked disk drive probably won't cut it, hasn't cut it for 20 years, and the fact that EMC and all of its primary competitors are all still in business and doing well sort of shows that it really won't change much. It'll just get faster and faster and faster so and bigger and bigger. So let me reinforce some of what, what uh, we just talked about. Um, you know, these, as Eric talked about, these trends have been going on for a long time, but, but more importantly, if you, if you take it to a big scale, you're still going to need core networking you're still going to need core networking, switching, and storage, right? Uh, because the expectations for centralization, availability, failover, et cetera, big pipes, big infrastructure, you're going to need that. So if you look at these things, they have to work together. And certainly you have a ginormous installed base of all this infrastructure. And so very often when, when, we, when we start to find these standards, et cetera, the world wants to go from black to white or white to black and just kind of draw a strong contrast. At the end of the day, these markets are growing so rapidly, there's more than enough space for these technologies to coexist and coexist they must, right? So when we think about software-defined networking and storage, that, that's going to take a piece of the market and Eric talked about it. We've always had direct attach out there. And so those use cases may expand, but the fact is those, these markets are growing so rapidly that they'll, they'll need to be synergistic. I think what's most important about software-defined networking and storage is around the control path and the management because that's one of our biggest challenges. So how do you integrate that? How do you make it seamless? Eric talked about, and you talked about the awards around you know, VMware integration. That is fundamental to taking the complexity out of the infrastructure. So you know, at scale, there is no question you will have dedicated networking and storage infrastructure. And then you can talk about the gradations in between and how you do that and then how do you deal with an installed base. But I think there's more than enough opportunity but innovation in software-defined networking and storage is fundamental to attacking the complexity in the infrastructure. And it's a system, I mean, you're right, Eric, I've been hearing for 20 years, ah, oh, hardware's irrelevant, it's all commodity, and it, it just keeps getting more and more important, it keeps growing, because it, it is a system. Well, I think what happens is when people sort of prognosticate the future, what they prognosticate is, we need it to be simpler, but at the same time, it always ends up getting more complex. <laughs> so when you look today, for example, at our hybrid arrays, we're addressing two fundamental problems with the same solution, which is the need for incredible IOP performance, at the same time the need for IT, whether it's in mid-market, the enterprise, even in SMB, to drive the cost per gigabyte down at the same time. And those are fundamentally, diametrically opposed goals, mm -hmm. yet with our hybrid yeah. array, the VNX and the coming VNXE, we can actually solve that problem and deliver the IOPS they want, which is going through the roof as everything becomes more and more virtualized and more and more applications run uh, and take big data, everything, at the same time we're driving the cost down at the same time. So people who forecast that you know, software's going to overlay all the hardware and, and commoditize everything seem to forget that as, as more and more apps become incredibly complex, that you need that power of that hardware coupled with the right coupling, right, interstitching between the, the virtualization layer to come together. And I don't think that's really going to change. If anything, more and more and more and more apps are going to get more and more and more complex, so it's going to need, you know, pretty soon two million IOPS won't be fast enough, right? And people will say, oh, you only got two petabytes installed? What, you got a small config? People laugh, but I was, back in the day, five megabytes was a big disk drive. <laughs> so, I remember that too very well, actually. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. So, yeah, yeah. Um, now, you guys are in the heart of this disruption, and I want to get your point of view on something else, which is for the last 15 years, we've seen store function move out of the host, you know, server into the array, and that's been, you guys have capitalized on that and, mm -hmm. and delivered value you know, through a variety of different you know, functions, whether it was replication or snapshotting or you know, VCVs or whatever, whatever it is. And you're starting to see with Flash function move, move back. Um, and Rich, you talked about the control path and the management. Mm -hmm. So um, today, you know, in the last 10 years or whatever, I.O.'s been a scarce resource and mm -hmm. you've really had to manage that quality of service. With, with Flash, you know, and all Flash arrays and the like, you know, IOs maybe are no longer the scarce resource. Are we going to be managing those from the server view, from the array view? Yes. <laughs> well, I think it's yes. But I mean, but don't you need a single point of control? So you need to you need to really take the natural extension of the things that I think we've been doing, which is if you really look at the management in the mid range, you know, Unisphere in VNX, we really approach it two ways. From the top down with the deep integrations with VMware, and then from the bottom up 
which is kind of the element managers up and crossing into the virtualized world. Because at the end of the day, um, the storage subsystems are special purpose built devices, right? And they have unique properties, right? And so the average administrator may never want to explore that, but the specialist that wants to tunnel into the details of what's happening in these systems, God forbid if something went wrong, right? And we still live in a physical world, right? So you really need both, but they need to be seamlessly integrated in a way that, it, you know, you need to be able to peel the onion and not see everything up front, right? You don't need all the visibility up front. The benefit of virtualization is that abstraction because it allows you to mask the complexity. So as you come down from the top down, you peel the onion. As you cross into these subsystems, they have very specific uh, technologies, et cetera, underneath them, and you need really both. But things are morphing, too. I mean, you just use the term mid-range. Well, I don't even know what defines mid-range yeah, anymore. We just had NYSD true. on. And I was surprised to learn that they're basically their whole back end yeah. is, is VNX. It's VNX, yeah. And I'm yeah. saying, well, wait a minute, these are the most demanding applications in the world. Because yeah, we love it, you know, we eat that stuff up. Yeah. You, you know, you think of it more from an application perspective, right? I I think uh, I, I don't think people really blink. If you say to them, what applications are you willing to put on your mainframe? What application are you willing to put on your open system? What application are you willing to put on Windows and, and, and Linux. What You intuitively know that. Right. Because really, it's not about performance, it's not so really so much about price, it's really about the SLA, the quality of the overall service. So you still look at many enterprises and their most mission, mission, mission critical thing is still on the mainframe. And it has been and probably will be right, for a long, long time. Uh, and as you come down that tier, so when you really approach it from what's the application requirements, then you get clarity on what the infrastructure is, and it just so happens that these mid-range systems, as we call <laughs> them, have tremendous price performance. Eric's talked about what's interesting about these mid-range systems, on they're on a tear in terms of technology and innovation to produce IOPS and bandwidth that you could only get historically in a much bigger system. And by the same token, um, their you know, capacity points are tremendous because they're very, very large now, Right? But they don't have 27 controllers and SRDF and TimeFinder and all these very robust services like you'd find in a mainframe infrastructure. Yeah, and so then you throw really Extreme IO into the mix and it's like, sure, okay, and, and <laughs> VMware is a software mainframe. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So, so well, you know, the beauty is there's lots of innovation. And, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of, <laughs> lot of innovation and, uh, and you guys, um, you got a lot of resources, you got good cash in the bank, you got a good M&A team. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Tucci talks, about, yeah, Tucci, Tucci talks about it you know, all the time. Uh, I was just down in Mexico uh, four or five days ago uh, giving the overall EMC story and I was jazzed just going, because you don't often tell the whole story. Yeah, right. And, uh, it, and then Joe talks about, you know, we have two methods of innovation, right? One is organic and the other is inorganic. And so we build a lot of stuff. We spend 11% of our revenue in R&D and we continue to invest both organically and inorganically. And, you know, unlike many companies, we've kind of had the equation of how to take something inorganic and bring it into the family and really capitalize on it. A lot of companies struggle with that. A lot of companies will buy assets, won't name anybody. Uh, he's up on the screen over there right now. But uh, they, it takes them a decade to get benefits out of a technology acquisition, and we just don't have Well, that. you know, I mean, in fairness, right, mm -hmm. EMC wasn't always good at acquisitions. Mm -hmm. right? I can remember some early days, but you know, you got it right. I got it right I mean, now. I think EMC's right up VMware, there. VMware, data domain, Isilon now. Yeah. Extreme will be one of the next ones which just, uh, you know, we, f we figured it out, and that's, that's really a uh, testament to Tucci and, and the strategy there. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's obviously you got a good process there. I mean, I've said a number of times on theCUBE, I mean, you, I put you guys up there with Oracle, with, with IBM, I yeah. mean, there's a handful of companies that are really good at acquisitions, and you're clearly one of them. The greatest acquisition in the history of the industry, of course, is VMware. Sitting right here, right. Yeah. So, well, anyway, congratulations on all your successes. I really Great. appreciate you guys Thank coming you, on theCUBE. Great, thank Always you very much, Dave. Really right. appreciate it. Keep it right there. We'll be right back. SiliconANGLE.TV's continuous coverage. We're live from VMworld 2012. We'll be right back. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you.